Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And we are back with another topical video where we like to start conversations with you guys. We're actually concluding our series of the best bourbon on ice, yes. which has actually been more fun than I thought it would be because I typically don't like things on ice, but Same. I'm finding new things to appreciate about each one of these pours. This is a single blind. We know what's in these glasses, but we don't know which is in what glass. Correct. So. We're going into this knowing that we're tasting Elijah Craig small batch. Yep. We're tasting Russell's Reserve Tenure, Wild Turkey 101, and Evan Williams Bottled and Bond White Label. So we're going to taste through these. We're going to let you know which one we think is the best. Aaron's going to go ahead and get started on this, but we want to let you know that we do a lot of blind tastings over here. So mm -hmm. if you like that style of content, make sure to subscribe to the channel because that's what we do. And like the video if you end up yep. liking this. At the end of this, I have some Buffalo Trace poured over ice here. Just for funsies. And we're going to test the winner against Buffalo Trace non-blind yep. just to see if Buffalo Trace can stack up to these or if Buffalo Trace is the best on ice. May I say something really quick right off the bat? Mm -hmm. I know typically ice tends to kind of deaden some flavors when you smell it. However, I smelled this out of habit and it smells very tangy. Tangy? Yeah. Okay. I'm well, interested. Okay. I just wanted to, to note that real quick. Well, Cool. Go ahead okay. and get into the palette. I'll go ahead and let you know also if you want to be part of our Patreon community, join up on our online community over on Discord. That's where we help each other find things and have a ton of fun together. We do virtual tastings on Patreon and we do just all kinds, of, you know, yeah. we have a lot of fun. We hang out there. Yeah. It's our, it's our community element of the channel. It's also where you can get our barrel picks, which we've got did a you, ton coming down the did pipeline. Did you say we do additional video content over there? As oh well? yeah. We do extra video content, including... I'm now doing music reaction videos with whiskey pairings yeah. and I've even got Aaron to agree to do one or two here and there. Yes. So all that's on Patreon as well. And we do a monthly live stream. So check it out if you want to check it out. Yeah. And we have merch. That link is in the video description below. If you want shirts, we're working on getting some glassware up there. All kinds of stuff can be accessed at the video description below in those links. Okay. This one's yeah. good. As it's kind of sitting with the ice, it's getting a little bit of a tea vibe. Okay. But like a tea with some pepper, but not super spicy. So it's like a tamped down peppery tea. Interesting. That's thing, maybe. It has kind of a tea smell to it. Like a like sun a, tea? Yeah. Like, you know, you, the ones you put out in the sun and to brew. Did you ever do a sun tea? What is that? You brew it with the, the, the light the of, heat the of the sun. The heat of the sun. The heat of the sun, yeah. Is that a thing? Let us know in the comments below. I've never heard of that. In it my used life. to be back in the 1980s. Maybe it's not anymore. Yeah, that's just classic Kentucky bourbon. I can kind of see what you, see you mean what with, with like a tang a little bit. Yeah, there's like a pepperiness, but it's very, like you can tell it's there, mm -hmm. but it's not offensive. Yeah, I'm getting more caramel is coming yeah. out of it on oh, ice. Interesting. And ice can kind of amplify certain flavors, dull other flavors. Mm -hmm. It tends to dull the nose, which we tend to like to smell stuff. I tend to like to smell my pores a lot, so I don't typically drink on ice. You do. But... I love it when ice can bring out a nice vanilla note. So glass one is good. This what do you think about that, This one has that vanilla note. Oh, see, I, when I get that vanilla note, the amped up vanilla, that's what I really like. And mm -hmm. we are playing around with the idea of doing this with higher proof pours. And there's a couple of higher proof pours that I particularly do like on ice. If you want to see that video series, put that in the video description below and we can do that as well. I tend to like Maker's Mark Private Selects and Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proofs on ice a lot because I feel like both of those get an amplified vanilla note. Yeah, this one has a vanilla note. I don't know if it's the chill from the ice cube, but it almost feels, it almost tastes like it should feel effervescent. Mm. I know that sounds very weird, but you know, there's like a flavor to effervescence along with the feeling. Do you like this better than the first or not as much? I don't know. There's, there's, they're pretty different. So I don't know. I think I'm going to need to come back to it like in reverse once mm. we finish them all. It's kind of how I like to, how to do that. I will say the first glass I think has more sweetness. Mm -hmm. I think this second glass has more of an oak, an amplified oak profile. Yes. And what he said. I don't think I like it because it's, it's losing the sweetness. If it had the amplified mm -hmm. oak and it kept the sweetness of glass one, I'd be super happy. I don't mm -hmm. know that I love how it's just all woodiness. Okay. I don't know about this one. There's not much to report home about. Really? Is it, I mean, I it's mean, fine. Get anything? It's fine. It's is not, it weaker than the first two? Perhaps. I don't know if I would say weaker. It's just like there's not a flavor that's jumping out at me. Like the first two had some more 
specific flavors jumping out at me. This one just is like an overall whiskey flavor. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. No, I absolutely agree. Yeah. It, it is kind of general whiskey flavor. Everything's very muted. Mm -hmm. The the To me, the sweetness is muted. It's got kind of what Glass 2 had a little bit where it's not very sweet, has some oakiness, but not as much oakiness as Glass 2. I think it's more approachable. This might be so far the most approachable with glass one being the most sweet, glass two being the most oaky. Oh, that one's got you making some faces. How you feeling? This one tastes like earth. <laughs> oh. And I love that. That is a flavor profile I like. I know not a lot of people do, or not everyone does. It is a hit or miss for some people. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna need to come back to this one. Oh, we might have two different winners. Mm -mm -mm. I can pick a winner, I just... Okay. That one, I was surprised that it was as earthy as it was because these were sweet to just neutral. And so I was kind of expecting this fourth one to stay on that, that mm -hmm. path, either sweet or neutral. But it's a little earthy. It's also pretty um, smooth. I don't know. It's like an earth, yeah. a smooth earth. I mean, for lack of a better word, there's just not much spice on this. Right. Like it's very, It's if it were a shape, if the flavor were a shape, it would be very spherical. Yes. Yeah. There's no sharp edges. Would it be a cylinder? Mm -mm. A circle? A sphere? Mm -hmm. A sphere is a sphere. It's a round. I know, but cylinders are also round. Yeah, but not on They're all sweet. sides. It's not a three... I'm talking about a three-dimensional okay. sphere, like a ball. I was wondering what kind of s cylindrical oh, hold on things. Now. This is coming through... Wow, this is wild. So the first class, I think, is the sweetest on first pass. Mm -hmm. These other three have some variation of an amplified oak profile from the ice mm -hmm. which is very interesting mm -hmm. it'll be interesting for us to go back through these spend mm -hmm. some time a being comparing them seeing which one we prefer the most because if we taste these in reverse order or just mix mismatched mix. order yeah it could totally change how we feel sure. about the other pours so we're going to do that right now we'll be back with our results and to taste the winner against buffalo trace see you in a second Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner, da, 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 da. a consensus winner. Yes, we agree. All right, which is rare. So let's, you have things to say. Go ahead and say them. Well, I, no, let's announce the winner and then I need to explain. Well, glass one is the winner. Yes. But why? Well, because for me, so for me, it was between glass one and glass four. Agreed. And after I was tasting them and we were talking, I realized that like Josh was talking about like, what would you like on ice? When I'm drinking something on ice, I want what's in glass one. It's generally sweet, generally easy to drink, mm -hmm. and it tastes very nice chilled. Glass four, while I really did like it on ice, I feel like I would want whatever is in this glass neat. Yeah. Because, I don't know, I, I there's an earthiness there that I probably wouldn't want to drink on ice. Yeah. I want that neat. I 100% agree. Glass one has the sweetness. It's very easy going. It's very laid back, mm -hmm. but there's still flavor there. Yeah. It and keeps you coming back the, to it. The more I drank it, the more it reminded me of sweet tea. I get that. Which, yeah. on ice, sweet tea, summer day, everything makes sense. Yeah. Glass four was good, but it did have that kind of uh, earthy funk to it. Which I love. And it, I think it would be better neat. We mm -hmm. both agreed glass two, too woody. And to the yeah. point of being a little bitter on the back end. I did like it. It was my third place out of the four. And it was my third place. And then our last place was glass three, which mm -hmm. we both felt was just generally, it just didn't show up to the party yeah. in this flight. Yeah. It, it just was too weak. It was too mellow. So let's find out what glass three was. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the reveal. Glass three is? Russell's Reserve 10 year. Wow. Okay. The I mean, 90 proof. It makes sense. Yeah. Can't Can't fault it for that. I thought this might have been the Russell's. I was trying oh. not to think about it, but all the extra wood from the age, I thought this might be it. Mm. But this is our third place. Let's okay. find out what it is. It is Elijah Craig Small Batch. Are you serious? SMB Whoa. Small Batch, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Elijah Craig. I thought this was the winner. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Before we go into our third place, I forgot to say <laughs> that this one for me Glass had, four. had the longest finish. It did, for sure. It lingered, which... Is I liked that a lot. So while I would probably prefer this neat, I'm not going to be mad if I ever have it on ice again. All right. So let's go ahead and okay. find out what our second place but, and no, our winner is. Okay. Second place. 
Wild Turkey 101? No, Evan Williams Bottled in Bond. <laughs> which, this is like, what, a $15 bottle? $13 bottle? Uh, 18 $18 bottle. Which means Wild Turkey 101 is our winner. Wow. Heck yeah. Now. I'm not mad at this. I'm not mad at that at all. Wild Turkey 101 is so versatile. Yeah, because we love it pour. neat. It's wild that, like, all the rough edges of Wild Turkey 101 neat get taken away yeah. on ice. I'm going to have to retake, retake I it. I want to taste it now compared to Buffalo Trace. I will as well. Also, I would like to taste, maybe I do this off camera, Evan Williams neat versus on ice. Yeah. I'll do it off camera. Sorry. Well, wow. maybe we'll do a Patreon video of that. So if you want to see it, join our Patreon and you'll see the video of me tasting it neat versus on ice. If All you right. want to. You, if you don't you, want to, that's fine. You taste the wild turkey. I just tasted the buffalo trace. Let's go ahead and swap them up. See which one you prefer. And I'll see which one I prefer. Sorry if the glass Whoa. clinks are loud. This smells very smelly. It smells like purple drink. It does. <laughs> it smells like great nerds. It smells like purple drink. Yeah, the the ice is a new thing. I'm not used to that sound. Mm -hmm. And we did pour the Buffalo Trace at the same time as we poured everything else. So the dilution level is the same. There's like a medicinal something here. Swap me back. Okay. Is it a cherry? No. Is it Grape Diamond Tap? No, because I really like Grape Diamond Tap. Like, scarily really like Grape Diamond Tap. My mom probably should have not ever given me that. Are you on that lean? What does that mean? All right. So I don't know, man. They're to me, they're close. They're different. To me, they're not close. I don't there's there's something in there and I cannot pinpoint what it is. That is not something I like chilled. Okay. And that's perfectly fine. I would say to me of this lineup, Wild Turkey 101 is the winner for sure. Yeah, I agree. As, as I took another sip of the Buffalo Trace, it just, it has a weakness to it that this, the Wild Turkey 101 doesn't have. Like I felt like the Wild Turkey 101 had like a more complete profile, whereas Buffalo Trace just kind of came through a lot more one note. It's good. I think Buffalo Trace is the second best pour up here. I want to oh, state that. I disagree. I disagree. I think this one is the second best. Do you know the smell of a hospital when you walk in it? Like an antiseptic smell? The, I don't know what it is, okay. but it's the smell of a hospital. Okay. That's what this tastes like. All right. Well, we'll agree to disagree there, but we do agree that Wild Turkey 101 wins this feud mm -hmm. here, this Hatfield and McCoy showdown. But this was a ton of fun. Yeah. Hopefully you liked it. Again, if you want to see us do this with high proof pours, let us know yeah. and let us know which high proof pours we need to put in. I would be remiss not to mention that Maker's Mark, Private Selections, and Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proofs both do very good on ice. So put those down there, but let us know what else you want to see. Would Rare Breed Non-Chill Filter do good on ice? No. Oh. We're not wasting that bottle That's on true. ice. That's true. We'll, okay. waste, we'll do the regular Rare Breed Okay. if you want to see it. Knob Creek Single Barrels, stuff like that. But yeah, this was a ton of fun. Yeah. Honestly, I think on ice, there's probably a lot of people who do drink on ice primarily that don't give wild turkey the time of day because they think yeah. it's a higher proof it's more aggressive more abrasive and if you put it on ice and let it chill out for like five minutes it's before nice. you drink it it's really nice I it's like it. sweet it has a full profile this has kind of expanded a lot of for me because i yeah. now I, I might drink it on ice more we're just gonna buy more wild turkey 101 that's what we've learned tonight <laughs> hopefully yeah. you've had a good time watching that's gonna be it for this one see you next time yep. Cheers. Bye.